Hey, good morning. This is Paul from Hot and Humid Hydroponics. Uh, today is May the 4th. For those who are Star Wars fans, may the 4th be with you. Anyways, so I'm just doing a quick video update. We actually got our first real rain since I could possibly remember. When I say real rain, meaning it wasn't a five minute smattering, it actually poured. Um, it's really nice to have it because our plants needed it. Everything is starting to green up a little bit. You can tell just even like 24 hours after rain how much things just appreciated out here. And um, while the hydroponics are not, um, don't, don't require rain, it's strange. It's like every time it has a good rain, the plants seem to respond. So I don't know if it's just the oxygenation in the water or just whatever it is, fresh rain makes plants respond even though they have a steady supply of water. Maybe it's in my head, don't know, don't care. That's just my observation. So, oh yeah, you see this black stuff above me, that's my shade cloth, it, it's been scorcher. I mean, here we are at the beginning of May in Tampa, Florida. Yes, it gets hot down here. It does not get 99 to 100 degrees outside. And in, it was like 99 degrees in Brandon um, a couple of days ago. So it's it's just been unreal. So. These are uh, sweet pepper plants. Hot pepper plants, from my understanding, really, really like the sun. Sweet pepper plants seem to respond a little bit to uh, cooler weather. Not to say cooler weather. They like warm weather, but they like a little shade. And uh, I've decided to put the shade cloth up. We'll see how it goes. And hopefully, if it starts raining a lot, uh, like it does normally this season, I'll probably take it off. I might actually even put up um, some, uh, some plastic uh, to, to run the water off. Because what can happen is if, if it rains every single day, all your pesticides, all your fungicides, everything will actually just wash off and you'll get beaten down by bugs who don't care if it's raining or not and will show up and eat your plants. Um, so beyond that though, the, 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 the pepper plants are just astounding. They're, they're just growing so much. And um, something you guys have not been able to see for a while because they were in the uh, screen and enclosure if you hear that croaking in the background, that's actually a, a crow. Uh, we have a sandhill crane. You can't miss them. There they go flying. There they are. Isn't that pretty? I uh, had to take a moment for them. So, um, <clears throat> all my pepper plants. So, yes, they need to be staked. Um, but what ended up happening is that I had a really, really bad, wicked aphid infestation. So, what I did is I unstaked them. And I created a, na a nasty little brew. It wasn't real nasty, just, just some uh, pesticides of, uh, of my choice. And, um, and I actually dunked them, you know, about an hour before the rain came out. So hopefully it's, it's pretty effective. I don't see anything alive on them today. But when it dries out and I'm able to get my magnifying glass out here, I should be able to see, you know, what kind of activity is. Uh, I'm going to be repotting these plants today, today, hopefully getting some new stakes on them and getting them ready for sale. Uh, these, these pepper plants are the same as you see behind me, uh, same varieties, they're just my overstock. And yes, I planted these from seeds and here they are. I planted them in seed back in February, uh, so they've grown quite a bit. And they've some of them got flowers on them, some of them even have fruit on them already. So we're doing pretty well. Just to kind of give you an idea what's going on, these San Mar, uh, these um, Marconi Rosso uh, pepper plants are getting huge. Look at these peppers, everybody. They're huge. They're huge. Um, so they're doing really well. I've got a couple with blossom and rot on them, but you know, it's gonna happen. It's like even with tomatoes. I'll be treating them with calcium chloride, which is stop, us, uh, stop blossom and rot using tomatoes. You can effectively use it on peppers as well. At the same time, I probably should be increasing my calcium inside my hydroponic unit. But again, it's just like anything else. You know, you get this is my really my first real run with peppers, and I gotta say, it's been pretty flipping successful. So I've got no complaints. I'm just excited. These bad boys will turn bright red. I mean, really, really red. So here's the question: How do you stop these beautiful red peppers from getting nailed by the stupid squirrels that are running the length of this fence? 
Well, I plan on actually getting some dollar store rubber snakes. I've been told that rubber the snakes really scare the um, the squirrels, and so I'm actually going to make this thing look like a horror film and put it up there. You guys know last season with the tomatoes, I put up Christmas bulbs to stop the birds, so you might even see that again as well. Um, I'm also planning on spraying all these with kale and clay, so this might be the last time you really see these plants really green. Um, so, as much as I love kale and clay because it works, what I don't like about kale and clay is actually, like, from an aesthetic standpoint, it makes everything look like a milky white, really, really milky white, but it does protect things very, very well. Kale and clay is very safe, um, it's a naturally mined clay, it actually provides some mineral, trace mineral content to the leaves, but it turns everything white. Um, you spray it on with, it's a wettable powder, it's also known as uh, Surround WP, um, and so when you're using Surround WP, and I'll show a video of me doing it, I did one like a couple years back, but I'll do another one, but Surround WP will coat the leaves, um, it will not affect photosynthesis, which is awesome, and it does a couple of things. A, it disguises the plant. Remember, these uh, bugs eat by sight, okay? Um, and if it's not the, if it doesn't look right, you know, animals are really choose picky for a lot of reasons, and it helps disguise for some bugs and some animals. So these will be white. They'll, wa they'll wash right, washes right off the fruit. So it'll be easy, and it's, it's non-toxic. It, people even eat kale and clay in certain food grades and so forth. They put it on their face and facial masks, so... It's super, super clean. It's, it's got the consistency of DE, maybe a little finer, except it will actually stick. So it also provides a reflective uh, factor for the plants. So because it is white, it actually helps plants uh, do better when you're in high intense heat. So for example, if I decide to take off this shade cloth, put nothing up but plastic, okay, you're still gonna get a lot of sun on these bad boys, and it, I want it to be able to uh, reflect a little bit of heat, so you'll, that'll do that. The next thing, bugs, for the most part, like to stay clean, okay? Have you ever seen bugs up close? They actually clean themselves constantly. So when you are, um, when you are working with plants and they're coated in white stuff, they get on there and they're constantly dealing with the stuff. Now, unlike DE, which is gonna, which is diatomaceous earth, which is gonna cut into their flesh, cut into their exo exoskeleton, uh, kale and clay doesn't do that. All it does is it gets in between their exoskeleton and it irritates them. It doesn't even kill them. Um, it just bugs the bugs. It's the best way I can explain it. And so when you are sitting there constantly cleaning, you're not going to stay there. You're not going to lay your eggs there. You're not, you know, doing what nature calls you to do with your female counterpart. Uh, you're not laying eggs on it because it's not a good place to lay because you don't like it. Why would you want to plant, lay your babies on it? And you're not eating, okay? So it more or less keeps them distracted. And uh, you know what? I'm okay with that. So, you know, for those who are really against pesticides, I mean, really, really wholeheartedly don't want to use any pesticides, don't want to do anything, you do that. Now, the cool thing about also, it doesn't bother bees. For some reason, it doesn't bother bees. Um, and again, even if it did, it doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't kill them. It just, they eventually get it off of them, you know, or rain or something, or they get in some water. It doesn't bother them. It does not kill them. It doesn't mess with their respiratory. It just irritates them and they go away. The problem with wettable powder is that when it rains, it goes away. So you got to kind of be on top of it. Um, you'll eventually lay down a couple of layers and it'll stay nice and white. So we'll see. Um, maybe I'll leave a plant with it off just as a test. We'll see. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm pretty bad at saying I'll go and do something and not doing it because I don't want to lose a single plant, let alone a single pepper. But for the name of science, I might leave one plant uncovered. Anyways, this is Paul with Hot and Humid Hydroponics. If you have any questions, don't hesitate. Have a great morning.